Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd with Bishes RV down here in Nashville, Tennessee at a Jayco uh, dealer exclusive like sneak peek display, getting you uh, our first look at a brand new floor plan, the 295 BHS. This is something, um, it's sort of like a couple other models I've seen from say, maybe Wildwood or Apex before, but they always Jayco do their Jayco things on this and, and, and twist it around and make it their own a little bit. So what are we looking at here? First of all, they are redefining the J Flight series instead of SLX and full J Flight. Now there's just J Flight. And what they basically did is they merged SLX and full flight into one solid unit here. Um, I, I think that this more closely, this model tends to represent the previous SLX series uh, a little more just to help you kind of get your bearings. But what we're looking at in this, um, it still has that six foot nine ceiling with the centralized air, carpetless floor flush slide system, which in this class is very, very few other brands are even attempting to do anything like that. Usually you have a carpeted slide and a step up slide and they're getting away from both of those things. They still of course have their two plus three year warranty, the turn signal safety lighting package with the J Smart system. Uh, Goodyear endurance tires are standard. They also have a new and improved uh, stabilizer system uh, out for these for the 23 season that especially in a bunkhouse like this as the kids are running around in the summertime takes a lot of that herky jerkiness out and it's if you like get motion sick easy it's going to feel far more stable uh, you know underfoot when you're going through this thing now you still have the choice of the two decors you can get the uh, the, the white modern farmhouse or the brown on brown on brown HOA approved cottage decor um, this model though what's really cool about it is it gives you a, a couple double bunks for a couple kids or a couple bigger kids but it also has a giant bonus closet uh, in the bedroom. We're going to go through and kind of show you what's uh, new with this brand new floor plan as well as some of the uh, the things that you can expect from the 23 season from J Flight. Some things that are optional, some things that are standard and help you kind of relearn an old friend over here. And if you appreciate the information that we're bringing you, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like our video. And as we go, let me know what do you like about this RV and what is the one thing you would change given the opportunity? And while we're here, we can make sure we get that feedback to the manufacturer. Now we are in a live dealer display. Last night, I, I stayed up late last night recording when no one else was around, but there are other people around today. And I don't feel it's appropriate to like shut the door and deadbolt this behind me because this isn't my RV, this is Jayco's display. And um, I, uh, you know, I, I, I don't wanna stop somebody else from being able to do their business. But um, I, I, I wanna get you in here, I wanna give you a look at this floor plan. Um, this is uh, very similar in layout and concept to what I've seen from say like a Salem Wildwood 26 D bud um, and Apex 290 BHS. Those will be somewhat similar. And the reason I say that is all of the, the those two RVs that I just mentioned and um, this RV, they have double over double bunks off in the corner. They have some variety of camp kitchen. They have a private front bedroom with a bonus closet and they have an angled entertainment center that makes for some pretty decent and easy viewing. So I think that they're all kind of hitting the same notes. They've all done it slightly differently though. So I will leave you links in the video description where you can take a look at those and you let me know kind of which one's your favorite and why. Now this is my absolute favorite way of seeing the flooring done in the slide out. This is a floor flush, no toe stubber kicker slide um, where the slide flooring matches the main flooring. Now this is their standard sofa. This is the base like SLX level sofa um, that's just a jackknife bifold. They are including what I like to call simulated cinema seating with that little fold down armrest and the uh, the bonus armrest bolsters, which by the way, are fantastic for like hitting your little brother, by the way, kids. I'm, I'm joking. Don't do that. But you know you're going to anyway, right? Anyway, um, see, that's, that's the thing with Uncle Josh's. Uh, we can sometimes not necessarily give you the best advice, but we can be fun while we do it. What I'm getting at, that's the standard sofa. You could upgrade that into something a little more plush, like a, like a hide -a bed or maybe staring straight across from the entertainment center on this one, you might prefer something a little bit more like a, uh, a theater seat. Well, stuff like that's available. But now watch that television. You see how it kind of pivots out and uh, swings around? You can, like this entertainment center is fantastic. There's also that open air shoe garage down below it that I like. Now, one of the benefits of that jackknife sofa that doesn't get a lot of credit, I think, is the fact that it um, actually has a huge chunk of storage below it. Now you see the U-Dinette over here has some good storage below it as well, and that folds down into a large sleeper. 
I don't know that you're gonna need to do that a lot though with a pair of 600 pound rated bunks over here. Now there are some USB plugs hidden uh, around the corner in those bunks, but you may also notice how each bunk has its own privacy curtain. We still have all that pocket screwed cabinetry goodness that you expect from a Jayco. We're looking at the farmhouse decor today. But again, there is that brown on brown HOA approved cottage decor, which actually doesn't look too awful bad, I don't think. Um, now they kind of redesigned some things from the previous SLX specs to maximize the drawer space. So you are getting more drawers versus what SLX did that did require them to go with some floor heating vents, but they really did try to work to put that in off zones like it's very uncommon, I think, that you're going to be standing directly uh, on top of that vent right there next to the kitchen. Not impossible. I'm not saying it's impossible, but um, you know that's just that's the route that they went with to maximize their total storage capacity. And I love that they did give us a space in there for a, uh, a little waste basket. They did some, I, I think, some very good things in that respect. Now, with all the uh, display materials that they have out for here. Um, it's uh, not as obvious sometimes where you do have some easy reach power outlets and whatnot. I think they're doing the right things in the right places in this. But what do you think? You're like, uh, you know, it's my two cents. I'm not the guy necessarily buying one of these. I'm just the guy who's getting to go through it today. So my position, my viewpoint might be a little different. What do you think on this compared to the previous generation of the two J flights? And I think the more that uh, you get to see these videos roll out, the more you'll see where they have merged SLX and previous J flight proper. Um, we still have a six foot nine ceiling, which is fantastic for extra headroom, but uh, we still have central air conditioning as well. We also still have a very aggressive lighting package. Um, your standard air conditioner will be the 13,500 BTU unit. Um, the uh, the J flights that are able to be outfitted with the elite package, those will standard have a 15,000 BTU air. And, you know, if you want to upgrade to like some 50 amp action, some second air capacity, there's uh, some allowances to be able to do some of that. Now, I ask people all the time, uh, what is your favorite part of this RV and what's the one thing you would change? I love the headroom in this and this shower just as a whole is huge. It's huge. Um, you have to say it like that. You can't just say, guys, it's really big. You have to say, it's huge. Um, oh, God, that hurt. <laughs> but I'm not joking. It's not just taller. It's massive. And then as I back up here, standard J flight, plastic toilet, elite, porcelain stool, good leg room around that thing. It was very comfortable. But I ask people all the time, what's your favorite thing and what's the one thing you could change? The one thing I wish they did differently. My personal pick is that was not just a mirror mirror on the wall. I would really like that if that was actually a Lipitorge storage galorage cabinet right there instead. Uh, sorry, that's my stupid name for a medicine cabinet. By the way, notice that little set of USB plugs right over there between the seating and the slide. Very, very handy thing. And here's a little detail that I'm not sure a lot of people are necessarily aware of. A little pro tip for you from your Uncle Josh. And this applies to a lot of RVs, not just Jayco's. Look at your air conditioner. And some of them have different vent blade systems like this. Um, when you open that, that will drop like 70-ish percent of your cold air right here in the main living room cavity. So when you get to your campsite, when it's hot, when you're trying to get the kids settled in while you're finishing setting up the campsite, cool off the biggest room, the, uh, in the living room first. And then in the evening, once the living room's cooled off, flip that shut and that will start to shunt the air through our central air vents to cool off areas like the, uh, the bathroom or your private bedroom up here. Now, um, uh, TV hookup uh, prepped over here on the wall. I think very few people actually use TVs in a camper like this, so it doesn't feel like a great position. I don't know that it matters for a lot of folks, though. Um, and as you can see, this is prepped for solar. We're going to talk a little bit more about solar when we get outside. Now, one of the things that's kind of happened here, and it's in a bit of a transitional flux phase, is it used to be SLX J flights had camp queens. The RV that we are standing in today has a 60 by 74 Camp Queen. There is room here, I think, for a True Queen, whereas the previous J Flight Proper's always had True Queen beds. So right now, some have one and some have the other. It's not really consistent and it varies from floor plan to floor plan. And I will do my best just like I did today to try to point out what they have so that you can make a, a better decision. And even if it's a Camp Queen, even if it's not a 
like popular feature. I will make sure I point that out for you. Oh, look at that pretty plant right there. Now, um, kind of taking another note from the SLX uh, generation of this, one side of their hanging towers is a, uh, a, a closet. The other side is a dresser. And then there's still easy lift storage below it, which is nice. But this floor plan has this big monster bonus closet over here. I am so, so happy to see more manufacturers adopting this setup. This is something that is so smart, something that I like a lot. It provides a huge amount of storage without really dinging the living space. Now, the thing, like, every brand does it a little bit differently. So what um, Jayco did here is they left this wall dead and blank. And um, what that means is that they have a bigger bedroom closet. Some brands like Wildwood will give you uh, half a pantry in here and then half a closet uh, in the bedroom. I don't know which way is right. I don't know which way is wrong. And I'd like you folks to chime in and tell me as we switch over to road mode, brother. So closing the slide out for you. One of the, I, I, I haven't done that yet. Um, I wasn't sure if that bathroom door was going to be able to open. You see that it absolutely can open. Normally, anybody who builds this floor plan, you can't get to the bedroom when the slide is closed. And I am very happy to report that although you might have to do a sideways travel trailer two-step, I think that absolutely qualifies for travel accessibility. And just to kind of demonstrate it myself, even a, a guy my size with my physicality, I really didn't have to work too awful hard to get up here into the bedroom. Now, trying not to make you motion sick a little bit, I'm going to go backwards slowly uh, and I'm going to <coughs> run into the wall behind me. I just want to give you uh, a look from the other direction. So like if the slide is closed and you walk in the door, this is what you're seeing right here. I, I think that this is an area where they absolutely nailed it, brother. They absolutely nailed it. Because like I said, I've never seen somebody else maintain full access, bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, everything with a slide close. This is totally turtle friendly. And if you appreciate how we took the time to showcase this for you and to find out what it is and what it's not, please hit that subscribe button. Let's slide outside. Now, uh, there's not going to be any question as to whether you're looking at a new updated 23J flight because the entire front profile of this has changed. They've gone to that full radius nose with the extra thick aluminum sweep on the front there. Personally, I think it looks it looks really it, it looks very modern from what they had done in the past with the corrugated skin nose. Um, up front here, we've got 20 pound propane tanks, 30 pounds, I believe you'll find in the Elite package, which is like the trim package upgrade that you can apply to these. But this is what's cool. So this is essentially the, the base Jayco that's out there. And we still have things like um, a power front jack, obviously the power awning with the lighting. You've still got that integrated A-frame chassis that J-Flight has been known for, but we're also getting things like the superior stabilization that you're going to find as compared to the, uh, you know, the previous just generic scissor jacks with these uh, LCI quick drop stabilizers over here. I like those things. They work really, really well, and I think you're going to start to see those come from uh, a lot of manufacturers. Now, um, depending on which J flight you used to look at, sometimes underbelly enclosure was standard, sometimes it was not. It's always now standard, and that larger freshwater holding tank capacity, also now standard. Something J flight has long been good for, though, and continues to be good for, is that full uh size baggage door on both sides of a true pass-through now there's some stuff in the way what we're looking at here is since this is a camp kitchen model it will now standard always come with a griddle and the uh the, the mounting flat uh platform that goes in the j the, the flat form <laughs> as i was saying mounting platform that uh you know comes with the j port that's what we're looking at down there now the fire marshal didn't want them sticking all that stuff out in the uh, the walkway so we don't really have that out for display today you may notice we're still maintaining the uh the prep mount points for the full observation camera suite which is one of several things that goes along with safety and towability with these um, so you've got the, uh, you know, the ability to outfit this with a side view and rear view. Wow, that's a big awning. They did a good job of that on this one. Now, let me ask you this. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I saw <laughs> squirrel, saw something shiny, and I totally broke my train of thought there. Big awning. Awesome. Did they do it right? Or should they have just shifted this awning arm back here a little bit closer to the door 
to encompass the camp kitchen. But understanding when they do that, by putting an awning arm near the door, if you get uh, rainy days, you get spritzed in the face a lot. So no matter what, I think you're giving up something and it's too long of a sidewall to try to do one big m -m -m mega awning that would uh, encompass the whole thing, I think. But compared to, like, I'll see a lot of stick and tin trailers like this do like an 11 foot awning and go stupid cheap. I like that they didn't do that. Um, they still have the tinted windows. We have that, of course, Jayco uh, standard two plus three year uh, warranty over here, giving you more coverage and more peace of mind. Um, a window in the entry door. Now they don't do a clear glass window, but they do a frosty glass window. So you get light and you maintain privacy. Um, is that the right way to go or not? I don't know, you let me know. We've got our uh, fold down stable steps here, which have since become standard. Those used to be optional. Of course, the Goodyear Endurance radials giving us 87 mile uh, an hour of peace of mind. And folks, please don't be towing your RV 87 miles an hour. Um, <laughs> there's just no need for things like that. Now, uh, over here, we've got our key block TV mount uh, on the outside. And if you notice, uh, like we're right outside the kitchen, that left-hand black rectangle, that is a heat exhaust vent. So like if you are cooking on your stovetop, it will actually uh, breathe that heat outside of the RV so you're not cooking your face off in the RV while you're, well, cooking your backside off um, <clears throat> in the RV. Now, in one of my previous little, uh, I think it was the 274 BHS, you saw that there was a J-Flight there with no ladder. And I think a lot of people are going, oh crap, did they get rid of ladders? No, no, they did not. Ladders are here, they're available as options. Uh, that's something that we uh, can be applied for. And if the uh, J-Flight that you're looking at does not have a ladder on it, it's prepped for one, and we could add one at one of our Bish's RV locations. Uh, obviously, with the exclusion of the uh, the rear ramp toy hauler models, because with a ramp door, uh, there's not exactly anywhere to, to mount that ladder, so kind of keep that in mind. Now, there are uh, little mini camp kitchens over here that slide under the bunks. Um, they've got the uh, little high pressure cold water sprayer port with a little garden hose thing on the blue coily hose. Those are all technical terms. I know I'm probably making your head spin with this stuff, but try to keep up with me guys. We got the double down drawer uh, galorage going on over here and uh, the dad's medicine cabinet outside for the uh, you know bottled water and the barley pop. Now remember, any time you get this uh, camp kitchen arrangement on a J flight, it will come with that griddle that you saw stored up in the front pass through and that will hook up over here. And dang, it is close to being a propanus, but it's coming off the side. It is going to be technically classified as a cooker hooker. Now, since we got a ladder, let's get you up on top of that plywood decked uh, Jayco Magnum truss roof. And as long as we're talking about construction, uh, plywood roof decking is one of those things that nearly no builder does. Even luxury fifth wheels typically don't do plywood roof decking. Now, they still maintain a factory standard roof solar prep plug up there. You may notice though that there is an option to put some factory solar on it. And I really want your input on this because my vote is I personally think every single Jayco from Bish's RV should have at least the uh, Overlander One solar package from Jayco, which is about a 200 watt package, mind you. So um, that's my two cents, and I, I would really love to hear from you folks at home, um, whether it's a two-way fridge or 12-volt fridge, like tell me which refrigerator you would want, and if you would or would not like some level of factory solar. I'd th that would be very helpful to us right now. Thank you. Now, along the way, I mentioned how this is sort of similar to a Wildwood, it's sort of similar to an Apex. I will leave you links in the video description where you can cross compare to those things and let me know which one you like best and why. And again, let me know your favorite part of this RV and the, the one thing that you would change if you had the opportunity. Again, for me, I would, I'd put more than just a mirror mirror on the wall in that bathroom. I'd like to see a medicine cabinet, but that's like my one thing. What is like your one big hang up? What is that hill that you're willing to die on a thousand percent of the time? Share that with us and I'd love to hear it. And then until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone.